Okay, so I just want to give you a preview of uh, where we're headed and what we're going to do. And um, I guess the first thing I will show you, and to do that, let me just create a new file in here. So this is where you'll find the code that I'm working on. So the Golang web dev directory, 00 temp 16 svc 5 And if you're just finding this online, you could go to goes to 11 at GitHub, and Golang web dev, and then 00 temp. And uh, we are in that temp 16 svc uh, whatever, 05 right there. And I'm going to create a new one here. And this new folder, I'm just going to call it a file. And I'm going to do index.gohtml. That's the uh, traditional file extension for a template. So this is a little bit of a preview of what we're going to get with web programming. And so there's a, a template file. I could have called this ASP. I could have called this PHP. I could have called it BFD. Right? It could be called anything. But gohtml some editors are configured to recognize this is an HTML template, so that's going to make things easy to do. So I create go HTML, index.gohtml. I have my main.go, right? And then in, in here, and I'm going to drag this down, so I'm going to get this out of the way, and I'm going to just drag this down to my empty files right here. And, uh, and so now I have main, and I have index.gohtml. And so we need a web server to parse this page. Right? So we're going to have a template, like a form letter, and we'll go through all this. This is just the preview. So we're going to need a web server to parse this page, merge it with data, and then serve it back to a client. Right? And that's how we create Facebook or any other personalized, customized web app where you have a general template. This is what the user sees for their home page when they log in. And then we need to merge that with data unique to that user. Bring out their username, bring out their picture bring out their friends feed, put all that into this template, and then show them, build that page and show it to them. All right? So that's the goal of what we're going to do. And so here's just a little bit of a preview, and then we'll kind of step back and build everything up. Makes sense? So let me just clean up my uh, files over here off screen and get rid of that. And now we are ready to go. And so the first thing I need is an HTML file and Emmet. Emmet.io, you could also Google Emmet Cheat Sheet. Emmet Cheat Sheet is a quick way to write HTML. And so uh, one of the syntax things is exclamation point, tab. And it fills it in with HTML5 doc type. And then, you know, in this, I'm going to have to have some template variables. And so I'm just going to put in an h1 tag and, uh, and say this is from dog. And we'll see what that means in a second. Okay, and so and that's going to be like in a lot of templating languages, hey, put a variable here, and the data structure I pass in, that will be the current value of what gets passed in. And so if it's only a value and it's a simple data structure like an int, it's going to print the int there. If I passed in a struct with fields, I would say dot f name. Give me the, the value that I passed in is the struct. Now give me that value that field from the struct, so you'd say that, okay? And so here is, you know, the template that we're going to use, and we're going to pass some data into it. So now we need to write the Go code to get it to do that, and, uh, and we are going to need a server. And so to instantiate a server in Go, you do listen and serve, nicely named, and then you give it the port, all right, so that's the TCP port, and I'm not going to pass in any data at first, and so I'm, I'm just using nil. Uh, and so this takes what's known as a handler. And so a handler's an interface, and we'll learn more about that in a second. So right now, you know, this will use the default serve mux. And so a serve mux 
also known as a multiplexer, also known as a MUX. Uh, multiplexer will allow us to say, hey, based upon a certain condition, do this, do that. Multiplexes, right? So that's just like an engineering term. And uh, just a preview here. And then from the package HTTP, I could do handle func, and that allows me to specify a route and a function. So if something comes in at the default route for the website, run func foo. And func foo has to have a certain signature. This is the web. So we have uh, responses. And we also have requests. Okay, so the web uh, server is all about requests and responses. A request comes into the server, and then the server responds. So we need to be able to see that request, and we need to be able to write a response. And so a uh, func with that signature allows us to use handle func. We're handling a function with a certain signature. Okay, and uh, and then we we could do something like io write string, and write string is a method from the input output the io library. And write string takes a writer, so we're dealing with interfaces here. If I look at write string, write string takes a writer and a string. Sweet. So I give it a writer. Response implements the writer interface. And so just to learn a little bit about interfaces, right? Uh, Godoc.org and uh, IO. And if I look down here, I have type writer. And type writer is this method. Okay? You got to have that method. And so IO write string uh, needs a writer, and uh, response writer implements the writer method. So we'll, we'll see a little bit more about that too as we go. And so now I could give it a string foo ran. And now uh, I haven't I haven't parsed my template yet. All right, but at this point this will still run. All right, just handle func this route listen and serve there. And when you go to that route, foo, and then foo ran. So let's see what happens. So I'm going to go to change directories, 05, go run main.go, and then come over, come over to localhost, 8080, foo ran. Not too complicated. Got a few functions to sort of like, oh, okay, that's how you use them. To understand a little bit more about what's going on in those functions, that's what we're going to explore over the next hour or two. And see what's going on with those functions and interfaces and everything like that and solidify that. But now what about my template? I haven't parsed my template so I could do a new uh, new handle func and I could say hey at dog and I'm just going to give this some other name so that um, so that you could not you know be confused by like if I call this dog dog dog, then some people think, oh, they all have to be named dog, right? But if I call it bar and I name this one bar, you can see, okay, at the route dog, we're going to run the function bar. Here's the function bar. Now I'm going to parse my template. So from the template package, there's a template package, I could do parse files. And parse files just takes a file name. And my file name is index.gohtml. And parse files will return a pointer to a template and an error. And again, we're just doing a preview, so you'll see all this stuff in a second. So I'm going to get a pointer to a template, and I'm going to assign that to an identifier, TPL. I can call that whatever I want. And uh, I have an error, and now I need to handle that error. And so uh, if, it, if it can't parse it for some reason, I just want my program to stop. All right? So log fatal will log this error and then kill the program. And, uh, and now I need to use my template template execute template and that will take a writer the name of the template I want to execute and some data okay and it returns an error but I don't have to do anything with that error if I don't want so I'm going to say execute this to the response what I want to execute I want to execute index.gohtml I'm going to pass in the value 42 and on my template, actually, you know, because this is from the dog route, I'm going to just change this. The meaning of life is change it to that hitchhiker guide to the galaxy. So now here's my template. When I go to dog, it's going to run function bar. It's going to parse my template, templates, 
and I've only listed one, so it's only one. And I could list parse files is a variadic parameter, takes as many strings as I want, zero to as many as I want. So it's only one. It stores it in TPL. Now I'm going to say inside TPL, execute this template right here with that name and pass in the data 42 and send it to, res to the response. And, uh, and then it will pass, it will execute that, pass in the data, which is 42, and send it to the response. And so now when I quit this, control C, and then clear it out, and then run it again, go run main, and come back here to localhost 8080, foo ran, and then when I go to dog, meaning life is 42. So that's a little bit of a preview of what we'll be doing and what we're going to be learning as we go through the different stuff. And um, seems like I had something else to say, but it slipped my head. And there's a lot of cool stuff we could do with templates, like nesting templates and breaking this up into the header and into the footer and then calling those different pieces so we don't have to duplicate code over and over and over in our application. And then I have for you a nice example of a project, you know, where, um, whoa, where right down here, a project example that kind of shows you how you could put it all together. You know, templates, public, where we're serving files with our CSS images and JPEGs. How do we get those to serve? And then we have our different aspects of it right there, right? We're, we're kind of putting our code into different files to organize our code. So that's uh, that's coming up. Anybody have questions? How many people that doesn't, that looks pretty good. How many people like the looks of that? How many people don't like it for some reason? I'm just curious. How many people are indifferent? Okay. That's the way it works. <laughs>